Welcome to the Displace Innovation Coffee Break. My name is Nicolas Hemian, and I will talk to you about AI data selection. Let's talk about the value of your data. Not all data is equally valuable. When it comes to the training of AI, having lots of data available is of course good, but quantity alone is not enough. To make the most value of your data, it is important to be able to select the right data. Let's look at an example. Say we want to train an AI which is able to recognize images of pet animals. So what happens when we ask a random number of pet owners to send us pictures of their pets? Probably we receive many images of cats and dogs, because many people own cats and dogs. And not so many images of, for example, turtle, turtle pets. So, unfortunately, this, has a, this influences the performance of our AI system. Since it sees many images of cats and dogs during the training, it will perform well on these images. But since it has not seen so many images of, for example, turtles, it will perform rather poorly on these images. So how can we fix this? If we simply collect more training data, we will probably again receive lots of images from cats and dogs, but not the valuable images of the more rare cases. So instead, what we would like to be able to do is to perform a data selection in our data lake to find the instances of these rare events. Of course, this does not occur when it comes to the recognition of pet animals, but this is a general problem when it comes to the training of AI. It is often referred to as the long tail distribution, which describes the situation that there are a small amount of standard situations which are easy to observe in the real world, but then there are many, many other situations which occur mass, much, much less frequently. But these rare situations, those are the ones which are more valuable when it comes to the training of your AI. So, what we would like to be able to do is to perform a data selection to find these rare events. Let's look at another example, this time of a camera processing neural network, which, is, which should be able to detect vehicles. Let's say we look at our trained network, evaluate its performance, and find that sometimes it fails to detect trucks. Upon closer examination, we might find that detecting trucks which, are, which we are facing from the back or which are approaching us is no problem. But trucks which, are, which we are seeing sideways might sometimes not be detected by the AI. So to solve this problem, what we would like to be able to do is perform a data selection in our data lake to find the, the images, the instances of side-facing trucks. Unfortunately, the data in the data lake has not yet been labeled by a human. So we cannot simply look at the annotations and select based on those, these instances. Over the next few minutes, I would like to show you how this can be done using Intempora IVS, selecting the right data from the unlabeled data in your data lake. IVS is a tool which connects to your data and provides a range of functions, such as data access, searching through data, visualization, exporting the data. And IVS is also a framework which allows you to define jobs and to run compute processes. So let's switch to IVS. What you see here is the web interface for IVS. And we've prepared for this demo a demo data set, uh, which we can see here. Uh, it consists of several recordings, and we can search through these recordings in a very efficient and structured way to find the instances of data which we are interested in. For example, what I can do is I can find motorway situations. So now the preview has changed to only show the motorway situations. I can also narrow the, the search down even further, for example, to find only situations where I'm on the motorway during night. 
Okay, but let's think again about the, the use case which we mentioned earlier of training an AI which should be able to detect vehicles. And we might have identified that this neural network is having a hard time to recognize trucks which are facing sideways. Of course, on a motorway, I'm rather unlikely to find instances of trucks which are facing our vehicle sideways. But there is another type of road infra infrastructure where this situation might occur. Think of roundabouts. If I look at the roundabouts in our data set, now imagine you are approaching a roundabout, and while you're waiting for it to be your turn to enter the roundabout, Uh, what could happen is, of course, a truck driving in front of us through the roundabout, giving us a nice sideways view of the truck. And as we can see down here, here's already a sequence where we can clearly see a truck in front of us. So let's have a look at the preview. We see the truck driving in front of us. And now as it enters the roundabout, we see it slightly diagonal. This might already be interesting. And actually, there's also another vehicle which could be, could be interesting for our purpose of training the AI, um, an emer emergency vehicle, which is also not a very frequent occurrence. But here, there are clearly a couple of uh, sideways facing trucks which we observed in the data. So this could be interesting for our purpose. So we would maybe want to select this data in order to be annotated for our training data set. Now, there's another way to further narrow down our search. So what I could do here is manually search through these sequences, but that could take a lot of time. So instead, what I might want to do is run an arbitrary process um, to, uh, to get more insight into the data. For example, if I select again this sequence, I can click down here to select the data. And then what I can do is I can create a job. And for this demo, I have uh, prepared a process job template, which is a standard new network for detecting objects. We have trained it on a publicly available data set. And I can configure this job in several ways, but I will skip through these parameters. And now I have configured my job. So I have selected a data uh, sequence, which I want, want to process with my job. So if I click here, I submit the job, which will now be executed in the cloud. And as it runs, you will, the, the, the process bar here will change uh, eventually to become green when it's done. But I've already prepared, I've already run a job on um, some other sequences, so we can already have a look at the result. So if we click here, we can now inspect the result, the output of our process job. And uh, in this case, uh, what we are showing is a histogram view of the detections of the neural network on the data which we've processed. So here in this instance, for example, the neural network has detected some cars as well as some trucks in the sequence. And I can use this to inspect my data. But of course, I can also continue to process this, uh, this information further to narrow down my search automatically. So this gives us some more insight into the data. I hope this gives you a short overview of what you can do with IVS to select interesting data in your un unlabeled data. Um, so we use the contextual search using domain knowledge to filter and find the valuable data for our purpose. Uh, this is one way of going about this. There are other ways uh, which I was not able to show today. For example, using a content-based query. Um, so if you would like to learn more about IVS and how you can use it for your purposes, please don't hesitate to contact us. Uh, we'll be happy to tell you more. DSpace, your partner in simulation and validation.